go down in the description, you'll find this worksheet posted, or a link to this worksheet posted on a Google document. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you kind of a, a precursor to doing reaction mechanisms. So for many students who take organic chemistry, they go right into doing organic chemistry mechanisms without actually really fully grasping what it is. So what we've done is we're going to go through and break this down into three different steps of things that you need to know before you go through and look at reaction mechanisms to really be able to do them adequately. The first thing is a whole bunch of problems and they're all labeled with A's on them. And the A's are you need to be able to figure out when you have curly arrows shown what the product of that will be. So a curly arrow represents the motion of two electrons either in a bond or two lone, a lone pair of electrons. And those are going to be moving to either form a new bond or to a different location. Okay. So when I have a curly arrow here, what that's telling me is that one of these bonds here, the, the pi bond here, is going to move between these two carbons here and here to these two carbons here and here. So if I were to draw that, I would move my double bond from this location to this location. Okay. Also, I'm having one of the pi bonds here, or the pi bond here, is moving over to the oxygen atom exclusively. So I'm going to be left with just the sigma bonding interaction, and instead of having four electrons, I'm going to have six. So the first thing you need to be able to do is you need to be able to draw what's going to happen. Now understand this, not only am I changing the location of those electrons, but I'm also changing some of the formal charges and charges of these atoms. For example, this carbon here, if we look, it starts with one, two, three things bonded to it, so it has one hydrogen. So it's not adding or changing the amount of things attached. So here I still only have one hydrogen, but now I only have two things attached. This now has a positive charge. That's a carbocation. Okay. If I look at the other ones, this one has the same number of things attached, so does this, but now this oxygen is different in the way that it's arranged, and this now has a negative formal charge. And so we've distributed the charges differently by doing this. So we could go at this point and say, okay, this is likely to go back into what it was by shifting those electrons back. Okay. So what you need to be able to do is, if you're given a starting reagent, or a set of reagents, with curly arrows drawn, be able to draw what that will turn into. Okay, so I'm going to do a few for you, um, but go ahead and try them if you haven't yet, and then you can come back and see how you did. For A2, what we're going to have form is we're going to have the H plus here is going to link to one of these two carbons from that pi bonding interaction, and the bromide is going to, oops, is going to obtain its electrons like that. And then this is going to pick up the H, H plus. Now the H plus can go to this carbon or this carbon. Either way we're going to kind of form what we got? one, two, three, four, five carbons. Okay. So we're either going to have a positive charge here or here depending on where the hydrogen goes. I'm going to assume the hydrogen goes here, leaving me with a positive charge there. And those would be the two products that I would form. In this one, we're looking at a resonance structure of carbonate. Uh, we can see the two electrons moving here. That's going to form a double bond. That's going to leave me with only four electrons. Okay. And then this is shifting away a pi bond, so it's going to leave me with a sigma bond only for a single bond. And it's going to have six electrons because it a negative charge up there. And then this, nothing's happening. And so we are left with so there's our two minus charge, and we initially had two negative charges over here. Those should be there. The second thing you should understand is if you're given a starting reagent set and an ending product set, how do you draw arrows to turn one into the other? How have the electrons changed from one structure to another? So for example, in B1 here, we have a case where we have some kind of base, uh, we have a phenol, and then we're turning it into these two structures. So the first thing that you can see is that the base has formed a bond with the H plus. So we would draw an arrow between these two electrons and here. And then that means that also this bond has to break. Now if we look, we have four electrons here and four electrons here. So we're gonna, we're gonna break this bond and then have that form a double bond. Uh, that could also go back to the oxygen. One of these electrons forms a double bond. 
either one is fine. Okay, so we're bringing that down, and then we see that of our double bonds, originally we had the resonance stabilized benzene type structure. What we've now done is we've shifted these electrons permanently down to here, or more permanently, and these electrons go down to here. So the four arrows you should have drawn to turn these into those are the electrons picking up the hydrogen, the bond turning into the double bond, the double bond shifting down here, and this double bond shifting to be the two electrons down here. Okay. The other good thing to do with that is then to try and do it in reverse. So how would you take these two structures and turn them back into here? Uh, to do that, we would take this and that would pick up that. The electrons would stay with the base. We would have these two electrons shift to here and those two electrons shift to there. Okay. So that is good practice to try and do this in reverse. Let's go ahead and look at a couple more practice problems here. So for B2, we have ozone resonance. Uh, that's real simple. We're going to turn these electrons to here and these electrons to here. Okay. And in the B3, we have nitrate resonance. Uh, and we can see we're forming a double bond here. And so we would take these two electrons here. And then we would kick out these two electrons to here. Okay. If we wanted to do them in reverse, we want to go backwards here. We'll take two electrons down to here, two electrons out to there. And if I wanted to reform a double bond here, I would kick two electrons down there, and then kick this double bond back out. The third goal we're going to do here is now we're looking at a case where you're not given a product, you're not given any arrows, you're just given the starting reagents. And it's up to you then to figure out well, what could possibly happen. Now this is, this is typical of an organic chemistry class. This is kind of the end result that kind of combines the two with a lot of intuition based on all the stuff you learned. So this is something you might not be able to do yet. But it's good to try to kind of start the process of figuring out how these puzzles work. Uh, what you want to look for in these cases, you want to look for cases where you have something that's somewhat positively charged or something that's somewhat negatively charged. And then you want to look and see how you can do reactions with them. So in the first one we have uh, a, a bromo, 2 bromobutane and we have a hydroxide. So in the first one here we have a 2 bromobutane and we have a hydroxide that should have a negative charge attached to it. So we have something with a negative charge here, something with a positive charge here. We have halogen attached to a carbon, and that halogen is probably going to pull on the electrons with a greater electronegativity. So we have somewhat of a positive charge and somewhat of a negative charge. So we're either looking at the oxygen attaching the carbon, or the hydrogen attaching, attacking the, the bromine. The oxygen attaching the carbon there seems to make a little more sense to me. I'm not really sure what would happen once the hydrogen is attached. And then we would have a positively formal charge bromine, and that's not going to be good. So, so at this point, what we can then do is we're going to go ahead and do a reaction from here to here. So let's get rid of all this extra stuff. So we want this to come in and do a reaction with this. Um, and in order for that to happen, we need to create the ability for more bonding. So those electrons then are going to come back to bromine. And so what we'll end up with is we'll end up with this. Um, in the second one, we have a bromine and an alkene. Uh, so the alkene is a good source of electrons. You want something positively charged. The only thing you have is this bromine. So you know, you know that this is going to have to react with this in this case. Um, how that happens is actually kind of tricky. Let's redraw the bromine here like this to give this a little more clarity. So this is going to form a bond with one of the bromines. In order for that to happen, these electrons are going to have to come over to here. Now, you might not have picked this, but it turns out that this actually particular thing forms something kind of strange, where it actually forms an intermediate that does not kind of strike you as stable. Uh, so actually, what ends up happening is the bromine will actually form a bond 
on its way, both with the double bond here, and it'll donate another pair of electrons to form with the other carbon, you'll end up with this intermediate. Uh, and then you'd have the bromide present as well. And then that would come in, and that would strike one of these sites, and then those electrons would go to there. Uh, and that will end up taking you to, oh, a dibromopentane. So you would have a bromine here, and a bromine here. So that one you probably didn't come up with on your own unless you've seen that before. The last one might be a little more plausible. So here again we have a source of negative charge. We have positively charged, negatively charged. So we're going to see this attached to here. Let's draw our bond there. Um, that's going to pull that and the electrons are going to stay with the chlorine. So we're going to end up forming one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So we're going to put an H plus on one of these two things. So let's go ahead and put it here. And that will leave a positive charge on this. And then we'll have a chloride here. And so of course those two then are going to react because you have a positive charge and a negative charge. And that will form on there. So in a second step we will end up forming two chloropentane. Usually in an organic chemistry class, you'll actually start with C, and that's obviously much more challenging than A and B. And if you have a strong foundation in A and B, that can make this a lot, a lot simpler to digest than going through and starting immediately with this, or trying to watch an experienced chemist go through and do mechanisms of really complicated reactions.